previously on Dirt Nights. What the f***? Ladies and gentlemen, the Wizard of Watertown, John Tash! Broke the fuel pump out, so we're done. Not good enough. We're getting stuff. And... Life of a touring dirt track racer is not for the faint of heart or the weak will. There's no time for being tired, no sick days for a few bumps and bruises, no excuses for a bad decision, and a tough day at the office can take on a whole new meaning. A driver is never allowed to forget that the dirt doesn't forgive. The reminders come day after day after day. The hunt for a United States Modified Touring Series National Championship is over halfway complete, and the wear and tear of the road is starting to show on the dirt nights. No yelling, Al. It's too early. I, that was a question. Was I yelling? You can still yell in the form of a question. <laughs> what are you doing over here, Gressel? Nothing. Huh? What kind of trickery are we doing? What? <laughs> Damn you! I gotta finish it. <laughs> it's gonna, so if Ryan gets up on the back end of you, he'll know it's you. Right. And don't touch him. Right. <laughs> Think I can get away with getting one right on their pit mark? Yes. Well, you're gonna need to have a lookout. Things might be getting a little goofy around the pits. But tonight won't be the night to take it easy. The Knights have invaded the small southern Minnesota town of Casson, home of Dodge County Speedway. This 3 8 mile speed factory is always fast and usually very racy. And tonight it will work overtime as part of a rare modified double feature. The USMTS was here in July but got rained out. So tonight, in addition to the hunt race, the guys will make up the July feature race. It'll be a long night tonight. Uh, hopefully just try and survive, I guess, throughout the whole night. That'll be the biggest thing. The fastest crew on tour right now is the 14 team out of Watertown, South Dakota. John Tash has won two of the last three features. And if not for an innocent looking bump last night at Deer Creek Speedway, he could very well be working on three straight. This isn't going to mess us up any here. We've got to replace some of these bent parts. we got them all laying right here. And uh, I'll we'll be right back to where it was. So one of those studs is important. In the Gressel camp, there is a noticeable sense of urgency. The magic of the first half of the season is gone, and the hunt has become a nightly struggle to reclaim the speed that had the Reaper in victory lane 14 times this season. In the standings, Ryan Gustin trails Jason Hughes by just over 90 points. So the time to get the 19R back in shape is right now. Was that 99? Was that where he was? Was he sucking me up on the straightaway pretty good? Al Haina has been on a racing roller coaster this week. He looked better than ever with a top 10 finish in Lansing, Minnesota two nights ago, but then failed to qualify for the feature again last night. Well, I just told him I was quitting. As is so often the case, the emotions of a tough race night can boil over. 
But here in the light of another day, the two longtime friends that make up Team Hena are side by side trying to get the seven car ready. I'll do it. Al gets the first shot at Dodge County Speedway tonight. He rolls the seven car out in heat one, where he starts in the back of the pack. In a sure sign of a rough track, the Heat 1 finish is almost identical to the starting order. Nobody, including Al Haina, was able to get around anybody else. Uh, they know as good a race than they could have if these promoters had a clue, not one damn clue, on how to prepare a racetrack. Oh, we're going to have a lot of cars. We better have a lot of water. Let's make a piece of Another fine racetrack on the USMPS Tour. This segment brought to you by Ibox Springs. Proven on the track, perfected for the street. That's just ridiculous. That ain't even racing. The early returns on Dodge County Speedway in Casson, Minnesota tonight are less than positive. You get a run on somebody and all of a sudden he's sideways in front of you and it's stupid to even try to go up there and pass anybody for fifth or six because all you're doing is you can wrecking everything. Al Haina is headed for another B main after a seventh place run in heat one. Corey Drips is up next and made an adjustment to try and compensate for the rough track. Uh, we've been running the car on a right front bump stop. Any place that's got uh, a cushion or some traction to it or even rough, the car chattering on the right front too hard, we just went back to a conventional spring. Um, that bump stop stuff's really good when the track's black and slick, but uh, we just haven't been on very many flat and slick racetracks. The 31 lines up with fellow knight Derek Ramirez in heat two. Brian Staley throws the green flag. We're back underway with heat number two. Jason Cummins with the charge. Look at Corey Drips on the move as well in the 31 as they go into turn number three. Chase Youngins winging it around the top side of the 18. Johnny Scott, Kurt Myers, your leader. Johnny Scott, still your leader as they head down the back straightaway. Ramirez now up to the four spot in that 4R car. White flag, we've got one lap to go. Cummins taking a look at the outside of Myers as they get on to turn number one. Down the back straightaway, Johnny Scott in the first car leads the pack as they go into turn number three. Keep an eye on that battle for a second. Cummins on the outside as they come out of four. It's going to be Johnny Scott. Jason Cummins, Kurt Myers. Derek Ramirez and Corey Trips in the top five. A solid run for Ramirez from eighth to fourth, but the 31 car couldn't make up any ground. This is the time of year when these racetracks should be black and shiny and slick and smooth. And we've got a car that's really good in that stuff. And when the tracks are like this, when they're tearing apart, when they're rough, um, we are really struggling to, to get, the, get the setup for it. John Tash spent the afternoon trying to get the 14 back into shape. He'll find out if it's good to go in heat four. Green flags in the air, heat number four by Ibox Springs. Down the back stretch they go. Cronin and Donling are one and two. They're gonna stick it in three wide. Sorensen, and Elberts and Tim. Tash gonna try to make it four wide on the outside. Tash bounces off the concrete. He's gonna drop to the tail. Jason Krohn, your leader, Donlinger second, Sorensen up to the third spot now, with Tim and Elberts battling for the fourth position. Ron Verbeek up into the sixth spot in the R. Sorensen to the outside of Donlinger, gonna steal the second spot out of corner number two. Tash up into the top five, once again in that 14 car, it is Krohn up front. Down the back straightaway, Tesh now to the fourth spot. Sorensen closing in on Crone. We've got one lap to go here in heat race number four. Tesh closing in on the 3D of Donlinger as they get on to turn number one. 
John Tesh on the outside now going to try to wrestle that third spot away from Dowlinger as he looks to the outside. Leaders coming out of corner number four as they come down the front straight away. It is going to be Jason Crone, Mike Sorensen, Dowlinger will nip Tesh at the line, and Bob Tim will round out the top five. Scrubbed the wall a little bit and knocked my front end out of whack a little bit, but uh, nothing too serious, I guess. It's a struggle so far for the Dirt Knights, and it's no different in the Spalding camp. Sam Blade out, actually got the wrong curvature to it, so we're not cooling properly. Um, we don't have time now to change it, so I'm just going to watch the water temp out there while we run and tuck in and boys will have to change it to be hotter than hell. That's all we can do right now. He may not be ready to go, but it's time to drop the flag as Spalding joins Ryan Gustin in the final heat of the night. Here we go, green flag south, final heat race here tonight. Down the back straightaway, Dale in the 0 2, the 99, it's Josh Hanks, Ben Maddock, and here comes Ryan Gustin in the 19. But the race lasts less than two laps for the 17S. Caution coming out as we got the 17 of Mike Spaulding, who is stalled up here on the outside of turn number one and bringing out the caution flag. It's been a nightmare night so far for the Dirt Knights teams in Casson, Minnesota, and frustrations are sky high in the pits. If anything, I'm just a little disappointed in my driving right now. I don't understand why we're so good and they're just absolute shiny black and we can't get around the easy stuff. You know, the moisture, we should be flying around the track. Unfortunately, the small mistakes that Gather made. Yes. Is it cost us money? Everyone but Derek Ramirez has to go through a B to get to the feature tonight. And it begins with John Tesh, who starts on the outside of the front row in B main number one. Green flags out, here we go. Donlinger and Tesh. Tesh on the outside as they head down the back stretch into turn number three. Donlinger on the inside, Tesh on the outside as they come on to corner number four. They are side by side up front. John Tesh with the lead as they cross the stripe. Down the back straightaway, Lucas Schott and Doug Hillson side by side. Now John Tesh going for a spin in the 14. Caution coming out on the racetrack. Your race leader, John Tesh, losing the handle up in turn number four, and the caution flag comes out. A rare mistake from the Wizard of Watertown. He's all alone out in front and simply turns it around. A shot at the feature just became a whole lot tougher as he has to go to the back of the field. Here we go, green flag is out. We're back underway, B main number one. Carew is going to wing it around the top side of the speedway as they head down the back straightaway. Joel Alberts in the 4A trying to crack the sixth spot as they head on at quarter number four. Down the back stretch, it's Donlinger, Noble, Carew, Wilson, Tim, and now Joel Alberts with a slight advantage for the sixth spot. fast. And with four laps left, Tesh is back up challenging for the lead. 
the wild action going on up front. Noble and Donling are exchanging paint as they slid down through the infield. Nobody stopped, the green stayed out. And now Donling are gonna come up and uh, have a few words with Mr. Noble in turn number one. So, things heating up a little bit. Here we go on a corner number four. Green flags back out. We are underway with this one once again. Doug Hilson and Mark Nova battling Paulson on the inside. Shot now up there in the mix as well. Trying to get back into the show. Shot now to the outside of Noble as they come out of four. Noble the inside of Hilson. It's Karuth and Tesh. Down the back straightaway. Into turn number three. John Tesh now taking the lead as they come out to corner number four. Karuth in that second spot. Sanders in third, Hilson shot in Noble. Don Linger trying to work his way back up. We've got the white flag, one to go here in B-Main number one. John Tesh leading the field down the back straight away to turn number three. Checkered flag coming out. He goes from the tank back to the front. John Tesh, winner of B-Main number one. An incredible run for the Wizard. From the front to the back to the front in just 15 laps. I got up and loose stuff up near the wall and got sideways and spun the car out. And uh, we had to go to the back. We recovered and won the thing anyways, but uh, I guess if anything, my pride's a little hurt. The car's pretty decent. While Tesh preps for the feature, four other knights will try to join him as Ryan Gustin, Corey Drips, Al Haina, and Mike Spaulding battle for the top six cut in B-Main number two. Gustin getting a great run off the outside of corner number two. On the outside of Maddock as they wheel into turn number three. Maddock on the bottom, Gustin upstairs as they come down the front straightaway side by side once again. Ryan Gustin back around the outside in turn number two. Drips up to the fourth spot. Ryan York in fifth. And now Al Haina in the seven car, challenging the 33 CSX Vanderbeek for the final transfer spot. White flag coming out. Ryan Gustin is your leader. One lap to go. Tommy Meyer now second to battle for third. Vanderbeek on the low side, trying to get by the four. Manic. He will do so here on the final lap. Takes over the third spot. Checkered flag in the air as they come out at quarter number four. It is Ryan Gustin, winner of B-Main number two. Tommy Meyer in second. Vanderbeek in third with Maddock. Drips and Al Haina, your top six cars. The Reaper rolls to an easy win with Drips and Haina just making the cut. But for Mike Spaulding, the night is over. No side, no forward, no nothing. So at least we're in, we're gonna make a couple changes and uh, try to get a dollar off the 31 car. He starts right ahead of me, so we're gonna do our best to pass him, we'll see. With double features on tap, the guys won't have much time to prepare. But the Dodge County Speedway is coming around, so things could get awfully interesting in Casson, Minnesota. The dirt fans of Casson, Minnesota are in for a rare double feature tonight at Dodge County Speedway. The regularly scheduled hunt feature is up first. Then after a short break, the cars will return to make up a rained out feature from July. Made a few adjustments to the car here and uh, hopefully the track cleans off a little bit more and we're able to race a couple lanes instead of lane and a half is about all it's been all night. But. Five of six Dirt Knights drivers are on the track, but they will all start from the middle of the pack to the back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime in Casson, Minnesota. Green flag is out, here we go.
sorts, and look at Wettstein on the outside as they head down the back straightaway the initial time into turn number three. Johnny Scott, Mike Sorensen side by side as they come at you at a four, they make contact, Johnny Scott to the point. Three abreast for the second spot as they go down into turn number one. Cummins, Wettstein, and Sorensen, Sorensen on the top side as they head down the back straightaway. Scott and Sorensen side by side as they come down the front stretch into turn number one they go. Johnny Scott up front in the first car. Sorensen around the outside trying to take over the lead. Top four cars running tight. Side by side battle up front as they come down the front straightaway. Two by two as they come down into turn number one. Caution coming out on the speedway. Doug Hilson slowing on the racetrack, bringing out the yellow flag. 33 laps scored complete of the 40 lap main event. Steve Wettstein up front. John Tesh in the 14. He has come from the 15th starting slot up to second. Anything can happen. We've got seven to go. Steve Wettstein going to bring the field to the green this time around. Here we go. Wettstein on the bottom, Tesh on the top side as they come down the front straightaway. Battle up front. Crohn's now worked his way into the third spot. Jason Cummins and Johnny Scott side by side for fourth. Here comes John Tesh. Johnny T flying on the top as they go into turn number three. Wettstein on the bottom. Tesh on the top side. Here they come on a corner number four down the front stretch into turn number one. Tesh down on the top side as they go on a corner number two. John Tesh, Steve Wettstein side by side as they go into turn number three. Wettstein on the bottom, Tesh on the top. Here we come down the front straight away. John Tesh, now your leader. Down the back straight away. Tesh edges out front, but Wettstein right there with them. You can see Ryan Staley grabbing the white flag. We've got one a lap to go this time by. It's a one lap shootout for the three grand as they go down into turn number one. Down the back straight away. Tesh with the run off the outside of corner number two. Checkered flags getting ready to come out as they come down the front straight away. It's going to be John Tesh, Steve Wettstein, Jason Crone, Johnny Scott, and Zach Vanderbeek. If there was any doubt about the strength of the 14 car, it's gone after this run tonight. Against the best drivers in the game, John Tesh runs from 15 all the way to his third checkered flag in the last four nights. There's no time to celebrate when there's another $2,000 check on the line in the makeup feature, which, after 20 laps, turns into a battle royale between the Reaper, Ryan Gustin, and the 90 car of Steve Wettstein. Steve Wettstein using the low side of the speedway. He leads it. But Ryan Gustin gathering that 19 car up on the top side of the speedway. Closing in on the 90 as they come down the front straightaway.
Gustin's got the 19 cranked up. Keep an eye on him as they go down the back stretch into turn number three. West nine using the bottom. Gustin right down the middle as they come out of corner number four. Ryan Gustin to the top side of turns one and two. Keep an eye on the Reaper. He's going to go to the outside of West nine down the back straightaway. Here we go, we're gonna go at it once again. Race fans, white flag, one to go. Here comes Gustin on the outside. Wednesday and Gustin as they go down to turn number one. Gustin gonna wing her around the top as they go out to corner number two. Down the back stretch, they're door to door, side by side into turn number three. Here we go, out of corner number four, down to the checker flag they come. It's gonna be Gustin. Wednesday in second shot, clone. And Tash. Wow. A nearly flawless run for the Reaper in his 15th feature win of the season. Good job. <laughs> that was <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, that was fun. Got huh? Huh? <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? Like your dad told me the last time he raced here, he goes, this has been a bad racetrack. Uh-huh, it's been real bad. So you boy. shook it off now. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. A wild night in Casson, Minnesota comes to a close with a pair of trophies in the Dirt Knights pits. John Tesh firmly establishes his position as the hottest driver on dirt right now with a third win in four nights. And Ryan Gustin closes the gap with Jason Hughes to 85 points in the hunt for a national championship. And finally gets back to victory lane in a non-hunt makeup race. It's a huge confidence boost, you know. You get past like that, and yellow, and you go back green and get him. You drive back by, that really makes you guys feel good right there. But uh, we had a good car all week. And uh, got some confidence in the back. For a touring dirt track racer, opportunities to win real money are few and far between. So when they come along, nobody can afford to pass it up. That's why the path to a USMTS National Championship is taking a short detour tonight. Back to Fountain City, Wisconsin and Mississippi Thunder Speedway for the annual Remax USRA Modified Nationals and a $12,000 top prize. Big purse on the line. Um, you know, Got a pretty good race car. One of the favorites coming into this event has to be the 14 car and John Tesh. He's a wheel man on a roll after winning three of the last four hunt races. And tonight, he's got a chance to turn that speed into a big payday. We're usually racing for uh, uh, two to 3,000 on the series, so it, it's a big paying show. You draw? No. You better go draw. No one could use a change of luck any more than Corey Drips. Nearly every night, the story is the same for the 31. A bad draw or a wreck in the heats and a back of the pack start in the feature. Tonight, the luck of the draw is in his corner. He'll start on the pole in his heat, so the bad luck is gonna have to come from somewhere else. And, of course it does. Let's just replace the There are few things more complicated and more precise than a high-performance race car. And a problem with even the smallest piece of the puzzle can make the whole thing fall apart. Precision is the key, and nowhere is that more important than under the hood. My passion with racing uh, as an engine builder, it just, it's something we built from ground up here. We know when we send this engine out the door, especially the USMTS guys, these engines are getting put to the test. 
We're putting the engine on the dyno. All our new engines, we always put them on here and test them. Make sure the performance right. We know what we got before we hand it to the customer. Uh, this is one of our open motors. It's a cylinder head that we've developed here. This cubic engine stuff should make around 720, 725 horsepower. We've got quite a few of these motors out there, so uh, we've been able to dyno quite a few and get a good read on what they're doing. So uh, we'll go ahead and make a pull and see what it does. So here's the pole, right here's our torque, it's coming up, it's going to make uh, 640 on foot-pounds of torque. Here's our horsepower, uh, right, right at 720 horsepower, uh, that's pretty good first pole. We use the same carburetor to, to do all our tests with at first and then we'll put the customer's carburetor on to get it all tuned in, but performance-wise it's good, so we should be in good shape. When I have a customer that has an engine problem, and if it's something that's done on our end, we want that engine back. We want to see what happened, what went wrong. How can we prevent this from happening again? And we really take it personally. We really do. Back in Fountain City, Wisconsin, the seven team is a man down tonight. Crew chief Gus Gustafson couldn't make the race, so Al brought in the big gun. I said, this is a hard life. His father and racing mentor, Jerry Haina. Oh, they're still wrapped up. Jesus. The cooking show there, Emerald? Well, I, uh, two of them fell down. They were still wrapped up in the cellophane. So. Oh. And he had me on camera. At 72, Jerry certainly knows his way around a race car. And Al could use a little motivation after a difficult season. Hana and Ryan Gustin will start the Dirt Knights Dash for the cash in Heat 3. With 62 cars looking for a $12,000 payday, the heats are packed with 10 cars each. Gustin is gone up front. Folks, this is what we've been looking forward to with the USRA Modified Nationals. These guys ripping it up out there for every position they can. Gustin with a straightaway advantage over the 4D and Dollinger with Hilson, Wettstein, and Hayden in the top five. Here's your leader across the start finish line, Ryan Gustin, as we cross the sixth lap mark. Wettstein now challenging the 72 of Hilson for that third spot. Look into the inside groove and turns one and two as Hilson gets a good run off the outside. Here comes your leader through three and four. He's got the number nine to contend with. White flag is out. One more lap to go for Ryan Gustin. Gustin blasts off down into turn number one. The battle now for third. Wettstein has it as they go into turn number one. Wettstein up to third. Dottlinger still second. Hilson back to fourth. Hilson though is going to battle back underneath Wettstein down the back straightaway. Out of corner number four. It is all Ryan Gustin in this one as he picks up the win. Just a few weeks back, the Reaper lapped nearly half the field in winning the U.S. MTS race here. And it looks like the 19R still has things dialed in on Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Things aren't quite as rosy in the Haina camp. Been too tight all day, now I go out there and I had no forward bite. I, I freed the car up and I get out there and I had nothing. Go from third to fifth, I don't even know what I'm doing here anymore. Back on the track, the 17S of Mike Spaulding has a big shot at the first checkered flag of his comeback. But even though he starts on the pole in Heat 4, he'll have to hold off two of the biggest names in the game. Nine-time national champion Kelly Shryock and current Hunt Points leader Jason Hughes. $12,000 awaits the winner of tonight's REMAX USRA Nationals in Fountain City, Wisconsin. And there isn't a driver in the field that could use that check more than Mike Spaulding. His night is off to a good start. Heat 4 is on the track, and for the first time this season, Spaulding is all alone in front.
dominating heat win for the 17S over some of the best cars in the country, including Kelly Shryock and Jason Hughes. On the big money night when he needed it most, Spalding will be in the redraw for the $12,000 show. Well, that felt good. Finally, the job started. Excited. We're in the eight main. What I want to do is 13,000 to win. So now if we just get a decent draw and start up front, I think uh, I think the big car chance is going to be a good car tonight. The Knights are on a roll in Fountain City. The hard luck kid Corey Drips will try to keep it rolling in Heat Five. There's your green flag. We are racing. Here we go. So field blasts off down into turn number one. Corey Drips up front. How about Brian Albrecht? A nice start for the 67 as we almost had a full ride on the turn number two. Trip's going to lead it. Here comes Lucas Shot. Look at that battle behind them. Hang on as they come out of turn four. Three wide, bumping and grinding all the way through the fourth turn and down the front straightaway. Anybody's position up for grabs right now. Myers now cleared the 85 of Dotson. He looks to the outside of Mike Sorensen now trying to move into the top five. Here we go, Dan. One lap to go. One final trip around the big third mile here at Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Payne's got second. Weeder Jr. third. Lucas Shot in fourth. Sorensen then the big speed bullet. Tommy Meyer in the 65. Tommy Weeder. Junior wheels around the outside of Jeremy Payne, steals the second spot, checkered flag coming out, it's going to be Corey Drips. The 31 starts on the pole and checks out. He'll start towards the front of the feature. The last guy left to qualify is the most relaxed guy in the pits. Three wins and four nights will do that for you. The Wizard of Watertown starts his run for the big money in Heat 6. There's your green flag. We are racing. Say so crank it up back down into turn number one. Tesh going to try to wheel back around the outside of Johnny Scott. Retake that second spot. Here comes Josh Angst in the 99. Last home of the Zero Hero looking racy in the fourth place position. That Zero Machine about to be challenged by Andy Bonestang with the 25 and Josh Angst in the 99. Noble continues to lead and pull away a bit as they get on to turn number one. Battle setting up for fourth through six as they go out of corner number two. Olsen, who was running high and hard earlier, is kind of struggling at the back of the pack as he's trying to work his way towards the top five again. Josh Angst in the 99 trying to work his way around the 25. Andy Bonstangle as they go down to turn number one side by side for the fifth spot. Well, that's been a great battle to watch. Almost a three-car battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Dolman has been consistently out in front of him, but Josh Angst finally takes the position away as the white flag flies. White flag for Mark Noble. One lap to go with John Jess and Johnny Scott following him down into turns number one and two. Noble checking out here in the late stages. Single file all the way through the field. Fast down the back straightaway. Tesh taps the back straightaway wall. Keeps it straight though. Noble's going to take another checkered flag with a heat win. A second place finish puts Tesh in the show. And the stage is set for 30 of the best dirt modifieds in the country to lay it on the line for the USRA Nationals title and a $12,000 check. This segment brought to you by Ibox Springs. Proven on the track, perfected for the street. There's a little more intensity in the pits tonight in Fountain City, Wisconsin. With $12,000 on the line, everything gets double and triple checked. Nobody is more fired up than Mike Spaulding, who won his heat and is the right, fastest right, right. he's been since his return to racing a month ago. I wanted to get into that eight main. That 800 bucks is going to cover our fuel and tires for this week. Um, it feels real good to start getting this car and my driving style to where I want it to be. Everything's starting to go smooth, and I, I like that because lately things have not been so smooth. So, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. With so much on the line, they pulled out all the stops on Mississippi Thunder Speedway. The track is close to perfect, but with 30 cars in the field, starting position is still key. The Dirt Knights drivers are in great position with three cars in the top eight, led by the 17S, who will start third. John Tesh and Derek Ramirez start in the middle of the pack with Al Haina bringing up the rear in 26. And they'll run things a little differently tonight. This is a long 50 lap race and officials have built in a mandatory red flag stop on lap 25 so the teams can make adjustments and add fuel. 
the first annual USRA Modified Nationals presented by Remax. There's your green flag. We are racing. Three wide down into turn number one as your front row hits it. Sanders and Mike Spaulding side by side. Sanders led him into turn number one, but the 17 of Spaulding takes the lead down the back straightaway and into turn number three. Sanders dives to the 20 to the inside as they come down the front straightaway. Mike Spaulding leads lap one. Spaulding takes the lead into turn number one. Sanders continues to run at the bottom in the number 20 machine. Terry Phillips now cracks the top five in that 75 car. Oh, trouble coming out of turn number two. Kelly Schrack involved in that. Corey Drips also Hilston in the 72. If the 31 didn't have bad luck, well, you know the rest. A lap and a half into the biggest money race of the year, and Corey Drips is out. Mike Spaulding setting the pace in the 17. Here they come on a turn number four. There's your green flag. We are racing. Rodney Sanders wheels to the inside of Spaulding. Erky looks to the outside as they go to turn number one. Down the back straightaway, Sanders gonna steal the lead. Now Erky looking to the inside of Spaulding. Rodney Sanders up front as they come down the front straightaway. Spaulding back up front. Here comes Jay Erky around the outside. Three wide down the front straightaway and into turn number one. Trouble at turn number one, look out. Terry Phillips and Ryan Gustin get together. Mike Steensma goes for a wild spin with Ron Schreiner, Mike Sorensen, and Al Haina sliding in safe. Another lap in the books and another Dirt Knights driver gets turned around as Missouri dirt track legend Terry Phillips gets under the 19R in turn one and sends him spinning. Gustin will have to go to the back of the field. So you can see both Phillips and Gustin to the back of the field. Here we go on the fly. Green flag is out. We're back to racing action as Spalding leads us into turn number one. Keep an eye on that 14 car, John Tesh, working the top side, trying to get around the 74 and Noble. Nate Wasman in the 52, also inside the top 10. The 74 of Mark Noble using that high line, down the back straightaway into the turn number three. Look at your top three cars here as they come down the front straightaway. Sanders on the bottom, spalling up on the top, and Erky was going way up on the top side. That 14 car, John Tesh, he's got that machine cranked up. He started 14th here tonight. He's up to the sixth spot, going for fifth. Spalding still leads Sanders in second. Tesh and Donling are side by side, and a good race for that third spot just behind the top two. Good battle up front. Tesh going to wheel right down the middle of the racetrack. Three abreast up front. We started them three wide, and at lap 13, we're racing them three wide for the lead. Rodney Sanders drives to the inside. Your 14th starter, Tesh, right down the middle. Here they come, three wide up front. Down the front, straightaway across the line. The 17 of Spalding still got the top spot. Sanders on the bottom, and Tesh in the middle. Great racing going out up front. Tesh to the outside of Sanders as they go into turn number three with Donlinger watching the action in fourth. Again, Tesh in the middle. The 17 of Spalding slips up just a bit. For the first time tonight, we've got a new leader. John Tesh from the 14th starting spot is there again three wide. They race down the back straightaway with Sanders in the middle. Sanders on the bottom, rather. Tesh in the middle of Spalding battling back on the high line. Spalding wheels it on the top side. He'll retake the lead at the start finish line as they bolt out of the turn number one. Bemidji, Minnesota's Mike Spalding works his way back up to the top spot. And Tesh and Sanders settle into second and third. What a race he got going on up front, Rodney Sanders. And here comes John Tesh back again on the inside. With these guys duking it out, the 40 of Tim Donlinger and the 96 of Jay Erke have got the best in the house watching it unfold in front of them. Spalding and John Tesh door to door, wheel to wheel into turn number three. Tesh and Spalding, Tesh in the middle, Spalding on the top. Next week on Dirt Nights. Spalding not giving up. And now Sanders and Donling are side by side as they look to the inside of Tesh. Two turns to go here for the 12 grand as they come on and